All right, uh, so we'll call to order the School Board Finance Committee meeting from November 25th. Um, the agenda, the objective for the night is to review the final numbers um, from the Eight Corners Project uh, and Kate's proposal on how we sort of cover those, uh, the overage. Any other topics you guys want to throw on the agenda for tonight? If um, there's time, um, I know we... Yeah, we have plenty to talk about, but if there is time, I would like to just circle back to the um, joint resolution, yep. if we can, quickly. And Sarah, I would like to give some homework. I brought draft copies of the first quarter report, okay. and being as how we're cruising quickly to the second quarter, I'm not worried that you don't have this information in your hands yet because there's something scary in it, but I want you to have it in your hands in that way you have a chance to read it offline and we can answer any questions and get it posted. Okay. That'd be awesome. Cool. All right, Kate. So, read. so my first comment is thank you all for continuing with this committee. You're um, stuck with us. <laughs> well, I, now I'm, I'm delighted because it makes my work so much easier mm -hmm. to have people who know what's going on and get through the process. And um, I really appreciate it. It's a, it's a tough job, it's a complex job, and, and y'all are stepping up, so thank you. Um, so without further ado, we have a really fancy colored mm. handout this time. I, I like it. I'm crazy with the colors. Um, I'm going to flip you to the, page, the second page first. That's the attachment there uh, that's a little sideways. So a little bit about my process. What I was tasked with was to... Um, if the town council did not have or, or wasn't prepared to use impact fees to help us cover the overage in the Eight Corners project, what would we then do on our side to cover those, um, that deficit? So I first took a look at three buckets of um, capital improvement funding that we have in this current fiscal year. Um, one was the district-wide HVAC and mechanical systems. Um, one was the security and access management account, and the third was a district-wide plumbing account, smaller account. And I went back, and, and with Todd's help, I reviewed a couple of things. First of all, what did we say we were going to do when we asked for these budgeted funds? Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see in um, these uh, segments here third column in basically says what we plan to do with the money. Um, and then what have we done so far? Is there anything that we can defer? Do we have any money left? So in the first section, HVAC and mechanical, we had three big projects going on all under that umbrella. One was to update the controls for the heating system, heating and cooling system at High School in Lentworth, which we did. That's done. The money's spent. The balance is 100 bucks. So that's nice, but it's not really going to help us. Um, the second segment was a big stage replacement of a bunch of air handling units um, and heat pumps and other related equipment at the middle school. And you'll see that on that far left column, we budgeted $385,000 for that. Um, and we had chunked out with the help of mechanical services and controls um, contracted folks which were the, the most in dire need of replacement, um, which were the most likely to fail. So Todd has a really nice long sheet of all of the individual units in that system, and it's kind of a triage page of, you know, which are the ones that we really want to fix first before they crash. Um, so far, we've spent the $264,000 of that and we have $121,000 left that we haven't actually contracted to do yet. Um, some of the work's been done, some of the work is under contract ready to go. Um, so that's a place that we felt like we could, okay, you know, we, we know that we really wanna do this strategically, we know we wanna plan forward, but we could pull back a little bit and keep some money for that, aside from that. The $150,000, the last piece in that section, is to replace failed components anywhere in the district as they croak, um, which they do. And you'll see that so far we've spent about a third of that money. 
a little over a third of that money. And I would be very reluctant to touch that piece. I think the only piece that I would be interested in touching would be a portion of the stage replacement. Does the work that happened at Walmart recently as a result of the issue that came about, does that, would that fall under the replace failed components or is that just insurance? No, it's 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 neither really. It's okay. it's maintenance. It would be it's taken out of the operating budget. Okay. Um, a failed component is like a five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar unit um, where we're going to dip it to capital funds okay. for that. So we we've determined that the costs at Wentworth are going to be manageable under operating agreements. Okay. The the notes that you have on that third, the replace failed components are those items that have been replaced for the 54000 Exactly. Okay. That's what we've spent the money on so far this year, just as an example of what's there. And I, I you know, this is kind of a super compressed version of, of the sure. information, but wanted to put some notes on there for you. Um, security and access mon management, we actually, the money that we have right now in fiscal 20 is carried over from fiscal 19. Um, we did not ask for new money in fiscal 20, but we have it available to us. And then in that section, you'll see what we've spent the money on so far. Our security and access management um, strategy that Todd and I mapped out wasn't part of the budget because we weren't asking for new money, but we did have a whole sort of scheme of where that money was gonna continue to be going, uh, principally in um, software upgrades, new cameras, radios, some door stuff, so really kind of the, the sorts of things that you see that we've already spent the money on. But there is a there is a balance left there that we could tap into. And then the final thing is district-wide plumbing, and we had four projects in that category. Um, the first two were to replace middle school water fountains and to retrofit some bathroom sinks at any corners. Those are the ones that we've done, but we did re reduce the scope of work in both places from what we had originally budgeted. Um, and we saved about $15,000 there, and we have two projects that haven't happened yet, um, doing, redoing the custodial closet sinks at the high school and middle school and replacing some toilets at middle school. Those can be deferred safely to FY21, um, leaving us with just under $40,000 in that account. So um, before I flip us back to page one, I, I would just say that one of the, the questions that as I put this back. One of the questions that came up in our meeting with the Joint Finance Committee was, well, what, what's the risk? What's, you know, what is it that you're not doing um, if you take the money and divert it to the Corners project? And um, the, the short answer to that is there's, there's not a terrifying risk about using this money in a different way. What it does is it, it, it forces us to be less proactive and more reactive um, we'll hold back on some of the planned, methodical, strategic replacement of, um, you know, thoughtful facilities maintenance and keep us more on the reactive side where we're saying, oh, we'll wait for it to break or is it the thing that's going to break next um, and just pushing off on some of the things that we, we don't have, um, we don't have to do. So then you go back to the fancy color page. And what I've done is down at the bottom here in this yellow ball bar, um, you see those three accounts listed, funding available, budgeted for planned work deferred, and I've got the security and access management account, HVAC and mechanical, and district wide plumbing. And the, the numbers don't actually match up exactly because again, I would like to not take all of the money that we have available left in those accounts, but I figured that safely we could defer 60000 in each of the two big ones and thirty in the other. So that's my thought process to get to where is the money available. Um, then my color coding is sort of what category of spending, what category of expense do some of these eight corners things fall into. So can we um, legitimately divert money from HVAC to pay for an HVAC expense that just happens to be in the eight corners module, modular. Can we legitimately say that we're spending security and access money on 
the handicap ramp or the fire permits or the canvas connector, which is now a you know, doorway and a safety issue for kids going back and forth. Um, so that's what the color coding means. And if you look down at the bottom, I've just basically said, what if we paid all those bills from these different places? And I've come up with a total of $75,600. Um, at the top of the yellow box, you'll see that we have a total deficit of 80000 almost 81000 And so the remainder could be charged to the facilities contracted services in the operating budget or we could take a little bit more from that district-wide plumbing. Um, we have just shy of 40,000 there, but I did want to leave a little bit in the bucket in case Todd wanted to move forward with some of those things on a smaller scale. So that's my basic thinking, and um, I just gave you a ton of information. So thoughts, questions? What, what would be helpful for me is to know what we're missing out on that list that you talked about at least that Todd had at least for the HVAC because that's to me the 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 meat and potatoes right what we're not going to be able to do if we do this right so the the short answer on the HVAC is that there's this list this sort of triage list which is what we've got going on so far and so, um, let's see, these are heat pumps. Heat pumps cost anywhere from uh, $7,000, oh look, there's a cheap one for $5,000, to like $18,000, depending on the size and where they are. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of fans, we did the cooling tower, we already did that. Um, and this is all at middle school that we're talking about. Okay. So dealing with that big HVAC system that we've talked about a number of times that's just not really, it's past its useful life. Um, so this list continues and it's basically kind of a triage list. And so what we've said to uh, Mechanical Services, who is the, the contractor who works with the system for us, is make us a list that, kind of like the bus inventory, right? Where you have the oldest buses and the ones with the most mileage at the top and then you work your way down to the newer buses that are in better condition. What do you replace first? Um, so Todd's working from a list like that that just kind of goes from the top down and it's really a three-year plan to replace everything. Um, so the risk in not doing that and sticking with the three-year plan is that your three-year plan turns into a four-year plan or a five-year plan, mm -hmm. um, which may or may not be devastating. We know these, these units are already past their useful life, so at any point they could decide to crap out on us and we could have a bigger problem on our hands. Um, so again, it takes me back to being more reactive than proactive. Um, for the security and access management, um, we'll certainly be asking for more funding next year. Um, again, we were talking about replacing a bunch of cameras. Um, we've spent, let's see here, We've spent almost all the money that we talked about spending on camera replacement. Um, we did some new controls work, but work, but we haven't done district-wide controls work. Um, so that's about 50 grand that we would defer till next year, and then the rest of it is all kind of miscellaneous stuff: adding cameras here and there, adding radios, making sure that coverage is where it is, um, and then some door access upgrades. And was the, first of all, are all these numbers final? No. Everything except for uh, Chamberlain I haven't got a bill from yet, which is at the very bottom, connect the plumbing. Okay. Um, so that one is not in yet. He promised it would be in momentarily. And Technopost Maine is not an invoice, but we have a purchase order, and that's the cost. Okay. So we're within $2,000 of solid. Okay. So, so um, just to speak to the, um, the plumbing line, the custodial closets at high school and middle school, what we were going to do there was um, the sinks right now are these sort of regular kind of, it's like a 
big bathroom utility sink. Um, and so custodians are needing to lift buckets up and dump them out and take them full and put them down. And what you really want is a proper custodial sink, which is low to the ground so they don't have to maneuver. Um, they've been dealing with it for decades. And um, we would just like them not to have to deal with it anymore. So that's why you know try to preserve a little bit of money in that line. And the middle school replaced toilets. Obviously, if a toilet fails, and we'll replace it. But um, we were going to do some sort of triage of older units um, and take them out proactively. So really, you know, I, I keep saying that it keeps coming down to. What can we do knowing that something will be failing versus, oh my gosh, it failed, and now we have to do something about it. So the other piece of the conversation that we need is what the balance and the impact fee account is. And I know we got that information from Tom. I can, don't have it. I can pull it up. It's just, let me grab the, I saw the email. Did I print it off? Okay, so, while you're doing, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Issue. I have the number. Okay. If you, so Tom writes, the balance as of today is $757,374.98. Past practice has been to use actual revenues from two years prior, which for FY20 would have been $709,590. In FY20, we used 769590 So we used $60,000 more than we received in FY18. So past, past practice has been to always put out between debt service and any, and well, it's always been debt to service it's until we asked for it. So far, right. Yeah. Um, and so they exceeded what we took in in FY18 by $60,000. Um, if we continue the two-year prior scenario in FY21, we would estimate $519,100, um, which would leave a balance of $238,275 for school costs. I followed it right up until that sentence. Yep. So he's got the $579,100 was actually collected in FY19, which is their two-year trajectory. Take away sixty thousand dollars extra that we used in FY twenty, so you go sort of dial it back and go um, go back to the norm. But the balance of two thirty eight two seventy five for school costs. Yeah, I don't know where that. How come is it's that, not a balance of five nineteen one hundred? Is that is that debt assuming, service? Yeah, that they take some of that for assuming debt service. Assuming that they use some for debt service. Right. It's not very much for debt service. No. Are they taking half? Is that half of what that is? But that wouldn't be past practice. Well, we don't really have a Either. past practice for using. Well, that's what I mean. Like they, right? it would be arbitrary if they took half this past. If they just decided they were going to take half because they've never done that before. Um, that's not quite half. Five nineteen one hundred divided by two is. He's, he says, or they would take the five nineteen, and we would not estimate anything for FY twenty one. Two fifty nine five fifty. If I divide it in half, it's close, but it's not exactly. Oh, was it? What's the balance today? Is seven fifty seven minus five nineteen. That's it. I think that gives you two thirty eight. Oh, okay. So they would use the five nineteen uh, that's, that's right, one hundred for debt service and then take away take it away from I get it. Right. So the balance in the account after what they were gonna use in FY twenty to pay down debt service would be two hundred and thirty eight two seventy five, which doesn't take into account whatever's being put into it. Right, because we're still going from prior collection. Right. Okay, so that does make sense. I see how you're looking at it. Um, I don't so understand the, the 204 down at the bottom, though. At the very bottom, it says... Is that what they've collected so far? Oh, that's just yeah. what they've collected. Okay, I see. You're the Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Why was it... Uh, 
never mind. Okay. So, I mean, there's money in there, right? To cover this. Yeah. It's just the... And we would need about $81,000. And so, I guess, you know, it, it depends on whether the council feels that taking this money from other buckets and other planned purchases and other budgeted projects is a bad thing to do or not. Or, you know, maybe it's half and half. Maybe it's we reduce our spending in other areas that we had planned to do and they give us some money. I, I don't even know how to proceed with this. Well, I think right. Before we worry about, like, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about just the moving around just doing of, it. of money? Begin with. Well, can uh, I can I just interject for one second because I missed that joint meeting. Mm -hmm. Did you talk about this and they asked you to do this? This is why we're doing this exercise. Okay. Yeah. That's so nice. we basically just said temperature check. Yeah. We came back and asked for money for impact fees, and they said we would consider it, but we would want to see how you guys could cover it first. Mm -hmm. Basically. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you. No, I just no. was trying to. No, no, no. I guess I'm just. Like, are you guys comfortable if we went to that covering these costs and is taking it out of the existing CIP to cover the acorns project? Well, I mean, I, I, I would love to have a list of the things that we are would be sacrificing, you know, the if that's possible. Because so the, the, like the list would basically look like the heat pumps, just more of them. That would be for the HVAC, right? Right, for the but, HVAC. And for the safety and security, it would be... I mean, because it's really, it, it's really, um, I think, hard to advocate for it when you don't understand it, for me at least. I mean, the heat pumps, I can get a better grasp. I mean, that it, mm -hmm. we have a three-year plan the and we're, we're going to... And the that plumbing like are both really specific. The security and access management is more scattered because it's a bit of things here and a bit of things there. Um, so the the plan, the spending plan, is basically replacing failed cameras, um, and we're also talking about some window treatment stuff, um, door magnets, which we purchased last year, more radios. Um, and we did do a software upgrade last year. So this year's plan is really doors and cameras. Um, what risks, like what cameras, are there actually failed cameras today that would need to be replaced or is this just being, pro again, being proactive that they're old? There are failing cameras at the high school. So we've focused on those first. There are failing cameras in other places, but that's the one with the oldest camera system. So we focused on that. And I, I do think, I mean, if you look at what's left available and what we're contemplating using, I've got $50,000 worth of funding going towards eight corners. I've got $162,000 left in that account today. So I guess my point would be that I, I wouldn't be draining it dry. Um, and we could still do the important things. We could still do the most urgent things. Um, but you said you're asking for more funding next year for that for that category. I think we probably will do some more upgrades next year. Uh, at least Todd says that we will. I don't know what the details would be on that. So the security and access would be about hundred thousand dollars once we if we moved it. Right. We took sixty. Right. And so, again, I didn't say, well, let's just drop them to nothing. I said, well, you know, what could we, what could we reasonably take away so that we would be focusing on the needs more than the proactive replacements? Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, to talk you into this. I'm just trying to, like, do it in the least harmful way possible. Um, and I, I don't think that we would be in a crisis if we did this. Mm -hmm. um, I just, um, I'm, I'm always reluctant to, to take a plan and then divert it into something else if there's another way to do it. So the question yeah. is, is there really another way to do it? Does 
that helpful at all, Alicia? I know I'm not no. being really specific. It, no, not really. It's not working. I mean, I'm not trying to be. I, I, I just know it doesn't help me because, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, from my perspective, the the objective, as I see it, is to either say, well, we'll cover it in house, or we'll advocate for it to come out of the um, the impact fees. And if we're advocating for it to come out at the out of the impact fees which I I think is more appropriate, honestly. Um, but if that's what they want us to, add, you know, to, to sort of justify, um, I would have to really understand what we're foregoing in order to make that happen, and I don't understand that. And so it, it just sounds to me like I, I would have to, if, if I were asked specifically, I would say, well, our three-year plan for HVAC would no longer be a, a three-year plan. It would be um, a longer plan um, by, you know, extended out by $7,000, I guess. And um, we would be foregoing toilets, custodial sinks, and some security updates. But... <clears throat> but not to an extent that it would really impact us, I guess. I, 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 don't, I don't have an understanding enough, I guess, that I feel like I would be able to make a good argument. It's, it's hard because, you know, philosophically, we want to be, we want to manage the money in a way that we can set up these long-term maintenance plans so that the accounts have money in them so that we, and we know, you know, what each individual piece of equipment is and how long it's supposed to last and how long we've owned it for. And so, you know, our staff goes through and, and identifies what they feel like is a reasonable plan. And so then it kind of, it feels disingenuous to me a little bit to then go in and say, well, you know, we're going to undo your plan because we need to take some of this money now. And while I understand it doesn't um, have necessarily like any kind of negative impact if we're not replacing something that has failed, if we can kind of defer things. And, and I, I certainly wouldn't advocate for spending money that we didn't need to spend, but I don't think that's what's happening. I think that money is in there to be systematic and to have a plan. Um, in the I nature don't. of, go ahead. Turn no, go ahead. I think the nature of CIP is like, you know, if you don't need it, you don't spend it. Right. And this is the only project that I can think of that is within the, the boundaries of using mm -hmm. impact fees. So I if come we back don't to use too. it and we, and we go this plan and something happens, we, we have a... We're gonna have a more difficult time arguing for that impact fee money versus mm -hmm. this is the exact type of project that I mean if they approved it before they would be approving it under the same principle. I come back to that too, Sarah. That this is that we are taking money that wasn't intended to mitigate a problem created by increased growth. We literally have a bank account that can only be accessed mm -hmm. as that. a result of increased growth, mm -hmm. and if we don't access that money when we have a proven case of needing it to address a situation due yeah. to growth, then that money is sitting there. And I and I, I don't want to be irresponsible in the sense that I, I know we've kind of used that account to pay down debt service. I, I, I don't yeah. necessarily know that I agree that that's the appropriate use of that account over and over and over again. And we've used it for that historically because we the school, I think, didn't know one, that there was school impact fees. I mean, Julie was just as surprised as I think we were yep. last year when this came up. And, um, and two, we haven't really had an identified need for it based on the... Um, we haven't done an enrollment-driven construction, construction project. project. Yeah. Until... And this is it. This, I mean, is, it. this is it. This is it. This is the first and, and, and I also <laughs> understand, what, well, that's the thing, right? And so I think that, that my apprehension, I think it, it's just human nature, or maybe it's, I shouldn't say that, it's my nature when I see my bank account getting low, is to, to leave it and say, well, let's, let's defer something we were going to spend money on and we'll leave our safety net right where it is. That, that impact fee account, I, I don't want to treat that 
like it's our safety net and we have to leave some arbitrary amount of money in there in order to you know feel good that it still has money in there that this is to me this is exactly what that money was intended for and I would feel much better about trying to make a case very plainly that this is exactly what that money was intended for and access those funds right now when we need them then start pulling from all of these other accounts who who gave you the directive to to um, look at our budget first the finance committee in general, as that was their consensus. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, so I it almost feels, although they control it, it almost feels like it should be the opposite burden. Show us why this does not fall under that. Well, we that had that expenditure. We had that same philosophical um, disparity last year when we first presented the portables, we did not, we underestimated the level of detail that the town council right. was going to want in order to feel comfortable approving the project in the first place. Right. And so we kind of swung and missed on our first presentation and then prepared a, a more that detailed was, yeah. presentation. And so that, whether, whether that was its intention or not, has kind of set the standard now for the level of detail that I feel like the town council wants in order to feel that they can make an informed decision. That being said, we walk this gray area where, to me, it's pretty black and white that if the school comes forward with a request that meets the charter of that account, then it's literally just town council's job to verify that and then and disperse the funds, whereas that's not the feeling of, of all of the town council. It kind of feels uh, the same tone of the budget process of it does. You know, bring us your minimum budget and then plead your case for what you need over and above that. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. It's like, well, what do we lose if we don't add a firefighter? What do we lose if we don't add a, a police officer? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is, well, we pay more overtime, sometimes that's fine. Okay, we'll do that. Um, and I kind of feel like from a board perspective in terms of what the board business is, it, it just... I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily my job, or my role, I shouldn't say job, my role to go to town council and list off the number of toilets we're not going to replace. Like, that's... Yeah, and I, I mean, I interpreted it more as, like, a transparency thing. Like yeah. They want. And so I, I think the fact that we've done the work is, is fine. I guess, Kate, this might be super risk adverse or planning ahead, but let's say that next year, in the, for the budget development process for next year, we identify that there's a need to add in more for more portables that we haven't already accounted for. And the budget doesn't pass. We could potentially use that impact fee to mitigate some of that. If, if we were in a situation where the budget doesn't pass or it doesn't pass as high as we want to or to cover that. Yeah, that so thought did cross my mind. I'm, if like, we take it now, do we that's not? That's good thinking. Right. Right. Is, that thought Pretty crossed my mind because, as you just said, this is the first time that we've had a real enrollment crisis driven need to use that money in that way for a construction project. And who's to say that we might not be in that same boat? We've tried to be a little more planful by budgeting for eight corners more this year and budgeting for Pleasant Hill right. this year. Um, but we don't really know what our enrollment numbers are going to be. As long as we have enough headway in the budget process, but your point was that the budget might not pass. I'm just thinking, you know, just that and we would still right? have to we'd still have to go and order the different things before, right? So we could be here before school started. Well, then I guess maybe I'm answering my own question, but we're only asking for eighty thousand. There's currently, what do we say? Two thirty-eight. Two thirty-eight. What are portables? What do we say? Run. Um, to we, depending on where it is, we about paid, to 80, we so. paid 164 200 for two classrooms at eight corners. Um, one eighty, sorry. So, and depending on what kind of growth we were talking about, where it was occurring, it would, you know, might be, we might be looking at more like the full project cost, which was the th two seventy seven. But we budgeted, Kate, correctly for more than 160 
we because did. of the increased cost of the units themselves, we budgeted, right? We budgeted I think 180. 180. Yeah. Okay, that's what um, I remember. For both of those yeah. locations, and and the eight corners one is more likely to be less expensive because although the classrooms themselves will be just the same or a little more, the site work's all done. At Pleasant Hill, you've got the, the opposite problem of not having your site work done yet, so we would have to be adding on to the cost of the portable itself. Um, but your point's well taken, Sarah, that you know, we, could be, we could be facing a problem where we want to tap into those at some As long as our budgets keep passing. Yeah, right? It's perfect. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. At least we're, you know, I think we got through that hurdle of coming to the council mid-budget cycle going, oh my God, we need it now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, solving it as a crisis right now would be, you know, as of this year, we're planning for it. And by the time we budget for next year, we'll be leaping the projections that we're seeing is the current trip. Key, is there a time frame for when we need to identify where the funds will come from in order to pay off these bills? Um, it's a good question. Not right now. Um, the way that the projects work, we wouldn't be bonding for them until the springtime. So it, I would want to have the question answered, um, uh, I would say maybe by March. If the town stays on its normal timeline, the bond issue for um, the current year projects for capital projects happens in the springtime. Um, and I'd have to take a look at what was bonded and what was appropriated, but I think that would be a good timeline if we know in the spring that we're going to need to move some of these things into other places mm -hmm. um, or that we have additional funding from the town and we know where we stand. Did they choose committees last week? Tonight. Tonight, or I'm sorry, that this week? Yeah, they name the chair and vice chair, and then they'll name, and then they'll announce they their the committee this week. This week. Yeah, yeah. This week. Okay. Yeah. Um, so are they not meeting until that? So they won't meet until the week of the fifth. So you move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't put anything on the calendar with them. We, just we didn't know. Sort of yeah, they wanted to get their committees ready, and I think their committees will change later. <coughs> I feel very pretty strongly about at least going and having the conversation with them and asking for it. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think I made my my position <laughs> clear. Yeah. Um, Sit your piece, and we can. I can bring this up as part of the finance committee report and at our next meeting and get feedback from the rest, rest of the, the board. rest of the board as well. Um, and Sandy, what do you think? I, I, I think you're you have a good plan. Okay. Yeah, I, for the sake of what we need, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, the council will at least listen. Yeah. Cool, so I guess that's a plan. I will bring it up to the rest of the board, get their feeling. I'll send them out information in advance of the next meeting. Um, if and you, then- If you think there's a way that we can streamline all of this stuff to turn it into something a little more digestible with maybe some more of what I was just talking about. Yeah, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking more of like a principal level conversation like, there's a certain amount of money we have, we can yeah. find it, and now they're, I think the numbers yeah. are less important. It's more of like, right. just here's where you we guys are conceptually. We're this, this much over, we can find it here and there and the other, yeah. and or we can take a few impact fees and keep going with the good work that we had already planned to do. Mm -hmm. Yep, pretty much. Okay. It's okay, I can put that together. I'll share around. And then um, once their committees are named, assuming we have the blessing from the rest of the board, we'll look to set up time for a joint joint session in, potentially even just a session with like a workshop session or something, whatever they want to do. I can send this to you electronically to the three of you, um, and 
that way you can have the data right in front of you if you're pulling something more streamlined together. Okay. Joint resolution? Yeah. Um, so I had thought um, when we left joint finance at the last meeting that we had agreed as both bodies that you were going to draft the resolution and share it with Don and work together to come up with something. And I, I was under the impression that the, the kind of the impact factor of that was that both the board and the town council were going to present like a united front and kind of vote on the same resolution. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised on Thursday when we didn't take it as an action item. No, it was a non-vote. I there's actually a, went back and watched the recording, and there was a conversation where I think you actually said, like, just remember that you, that you make sure you tell people it's a non-action item. And the reason for that was because Tom said, if we vote on it as a resolution and the next finance committee doesn't want to take it forward in that exact wording, then they have to go back and like undo the resolution, which just creates more admin. And so his recommendation, which I think everyone agreed to, was just take it as a, a recommendation, not action item. Okay. So that that definitely makes more sense as to why the resolution at one point had all of the legal wording in it as though it was worded as a resolution. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we all left that meeting on the same page, and so I think, uh, admittedly, like even you saying that, like I did not go back and rewatch the meeting, and I should have because when I saw the joint resolution so formal, I did think it was something we were going to vote on. I couldn't agree more. Okay, but I think ultimately, to get it finalized, I needed to concede on some of that language gotcha. being in there, whether or not I thought it was appropriate or not. Um, the, the most imp the only important part are like those bullets everything else to me was just um, see what I had. okay so in my role as liaison to the town council um, that they're they've now taken it off their agenda okay so which to me was we brought it forward and I thought they were going to bring it forward at their last they took it off totally because Paul texted me this morning and said, asked whether it should be a non-action. I said, no, it shouldn't be a non-action, but it should, not that it should be removed from the agenda. Okay. I will, I will clear this up in terms of our thinking and, and what our rec, so our recommendation from the board's position on the joint resolution was that it's a recommendation and that they should still come forward with it as a recommendation. Correct. Okay. Well, the point is little moot since it, they've already turned over the membership at this point. Uh, well, well, maybe not. No, I mean, the point of it was to say, to listen, we've worked over the last year and this is what we agreed with. Go forth and do great things with your next <laughs> committee. Right. Our committee hasn't changed. Theirs will. And right. So I think it's just having yeah. that So it's a hands-off of, of that work. Yeah. Okay. Did they say why they wanted to take it off? No, I just saw it. It was like a, you just saw it. That'd be disappointing. I think we just, I just need to be on the same page. Yeah. Yep. The okay. joint, the joint committee. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Nope. Do you mind if I hand you some? Yes. My work assignment. Take one, Kate. pass them down. There's a big chunk of them because I thought we'd have a lot of spectators tonight. You know how that first quarter just lives people right up. It's got my usual storytelling in it, so hopefully it's going to make sense to you. And it's nice that you're seasoned. We're best I mean, now. Don't give us too much credit. <laughs> yeah, um, well, you know, and it's really probably time for you to go to your next thing, right? Who's doing the 5:30 thing? I was just going to. Sandy has to be the 5:30. Is it at 30 or 6? It's 20. Oh, it's at 30. A piece of it's at 30 and a piece of it's at 6.
everybody has to be there at 5.30? I know I have to be there at 5.30. Oh, you do? Yeah. Other people yeah. Okay. All right, meet you in Thank right. you, Sarah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.